Hey there, everyone. It's Q with YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced channel that shows Amiga stuff in Amiga software. Hold and modify. I'm back. Been a little bit, but um, I had some problems with things. But uh, here's the SCSI to SD version 6. This is a 2021B revision. I have a 2 gig uh, so called industrial card in the 3000. I've got the GoTech with its, uh, it's loaded up with all my standard floppies. And then I've got the wonderful RE3000 board here and a naked uh, Amiga 3000. So, what I'm trying to do still is get this SCSI to SD working. I believe I predicted this long ago that if I was to ever get one of these SCSI to SDs, that uh, it would not go well because I'm just cursed with all cards, as we know. Uh, the SCSI hard drive, the real hard drive that was donated to me by Chris Edwards, of course, worked flawlessly. But I have uh, configured this card using the utility. I have people helping me in Discord. Uh, thank you very much for that. And the problem is this 1.6 gig card is only being seen as 973 megabytes. I have tried everything. I've even tried manually editing the settings to see if I can cheat it out. And all that does is freak it out. So if you go ahead and just say, let's, let's just use the 973. So, by the way, that's the, that's the Fujitsu hard, the real SCSI hard drive I have. So I'm like, okay, let's do that. Click okay. And then we do the whole, you know, save, save changes to drive. Okay. Partition drive. Sure enough. Yeah, that's 487. 479 it's like yeah so like my workbench partition I'm gonna just take it down a little bit it doesn't need to be crazy and I don't even really need to change the buffers or any of this stuff I'm gonna do like the wrong file names um, and then already like weird stuff is starting to happen like, I don't know what's going on I'm just trying to make this you know not crazy like let's do 283 again and now it says DH1. I'm like, what? Why did it? Why did it go DH1? And why is it not bootable all of a sudden? So what? What? What's going on? It's long file names. Okay. And then here, this will be. This is apparently DH1. I guess. But it says DH0. So again, we'll do that. This is a little bit more, so we'll give it a little more buffers. Um, and then we're just, we're gonna long file, yeah, we're gonna leave that alone. So then I go over here, I got my DH. DH, did you see what just happened? Why is this big block here, small block here, and then I click over here and it's like, oh no, this is a big block. So I'm like, all right, screw this, default partition, leave it alone, just, this one I just wanna make sure it's a little smaller. Please, and then I want it to be long file names, okay? And then all of a sudden this happens. So I'm like, well then this guy we can move down here and make bigger. That's DH1. I said we'll give him some more buffers. He's a little bigger, he's not bootable. We'll give him long file names. Okay, so we've got DH1 not bootable, DH0 bootable. Okay, save changes to drive. Yes. Exit. Reboot. That rainbow is the 6860 that's in here. It's a phase five. So sorry for shaky wobble cam guys. I'm hand holding this and uh, it can be a bit of a challenge. So the GoTech is booting off of the install 3.2. Tick, 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 tick. Editing, edit this out queue. And here we are booting up finally. And there's our partitions. And they look like they look like craziness because that's, that's what they do. And we're gonna go format. Just go ahead and make this one um, workbench. Yes, workbench. Don't need the trash can. We'll do a quick format. Yep. And then we'll make this one. I called it DH0, DH1. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to, just for Amiga 3000, this, I call it work. Well, sometimes I call it storage. Quick format, format. Okay, uh, one of the things you might be noticing too, if you can see, there's the standard more ray happening on the screen for me filming off the monitor, but you're gonna see like 
the icons on the screen kind of do this little wiggle, 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 wiggle. That happens whenever there's disc, disc activity or if you move this around. So if I get in here close, see that wiggle, wiggle, wiggle that happens? John Hertel, if you're watching. Yeah, this is something to do with the, the Amber or the Denise, possibly. Uh, the Picasso 2 does not pass this through. So luckily with my Picasso 2, once it's installed, I won't have that graphical issue. But just be aware that on this RE3000, I am getting this weird noise, some noise going on happening on the uh, chipset there. Anyway, let's go to install. And I'm going to start this install and hopefully uh, report back that it went flawlessly and the 3000 didn't lock up uh, while doing it. I uh, had an issue before when I tried this that the 3000 just kind of froze while writing to the drive. I had forgot to set a speed limit on the SD SCSI prep using the utility that came with this card. Uh, it defaults to no speed limit. I set it to asynchronous 5 0.5 megabytes, which this card should be able to handle just fine, and so should the SCSI uh, bus, I'd hope. Um, and I had not set that before, so I set it to asynchronous 5.5 megabytes, and I'm hoping this time uh, this will uh, not freak out when I uh, install Workbench. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll get back to you guys when it's done, hopefully with happy news. Well, we are uh, now back, and as you can see, the install did go well. I did not have any crash or freezes on the SCSI to SD, so good good for me, good. And we'll do the obligatory uh, speed. It should all be M-flopping and mippling and mip-flopping, and here it goes, so yeah. Um, I do have, uh, there's, what is this thing I have? It has... Um, 64 megs of memory in it, but I do have an additional 64 for the two empty slots in the O60 that are tucked away in here, and then I can make it have the full 128. But let's go to drives, and let's go to DH0, and there it is, and let's do speed. Hopefully it'll be around 5.5. There's two. Well, is better than 1.1 or 1.3 that I get in my 1200, but definitely not 5.5. Two. All right. Um, I mean, that's it's fine. Again, it is a two gig card, but for some reason I can only get it to be seen as, um, is this 987 megs. Now this ANSI SCSI 2, I never, was the Amiga 3000 a SCSI 2 controller? I thought it was just a SCSI controller. Is that maybe a setting I'm screwing up? I don't know. So I'm back again, but this time we're over on my virtual Amiga in Win UAE. And the reason we're over here is because I do have to show you an important step. The uh, 3000, which is way over there, so say hello. Uh, what I'm doing is I have the SCSI to SD now plugged into the PC, and this is how I update my real Amiga 3000. This is the plan. What I'm going to do is I have a very long SCSI cable that will come out of the back of this thing into the 3000. And when I button it... Okay, where were we? So, anyway, when this uh, card, this SCSI to SD is plugged into my 3000, it's gonna hang out the back. So the 3000 will be completely buttoned up but I'll have the SCSI to SD in its entirety hanging out back. And that's because, unfortunately, at least unless somebody else can tell me differently, I have not been able to eject this uh, SD card and put it into a PC card reader and have WinUAE be able to uh, find it. It just doesn't show up. So I think it's because the SD card is married to the SCSI to SD, which I don't, I don't, I don't care. I can flop this out the back of my closed up 3000. That's fine. Believe me, that's less a hassle than uh, having to sneak your net files back and forth on floppy disks. So what I do is you go into WinUE and I have my real Amiga 3000 configuration. Uh, when you add the hard drive, it, it'll automatically see it as RDB. There it is, RDB. And then you just do some things that are common sense, like it's a Commodore Amiga 3000 SCSI controller and the default of SCSI-2. That was the only thing I changed. Click add hard drive and then it, uh, it adds it. And you're off to the races. 
and you save that config. That way, every time I boot that real 3000 config, I get my real Amiga 3000, just like it is over here, uh, on here in WinUE. And what I've done, of course, I've shared my entire Amiga vault to this Amiga so that I can go into Dopus here and I can start loading up the drive with all my goodies. So when I start uh, getting all my software over, all my uh, things I want to show, you know, it's not, a, like I said, it's not a sneaker net marathon using floppy disks. Uh, since I don't have a network card, I don't have a USB card, I'm really trying to keep this 3000 as simple as I can, believe it or not. I know my videos may think that's not really the case. Um, but the other big one is when I do my 3D animations in Lightwave, I need to be able to get the files back and forth um, in a way that's, that's so I can get them onto the internet and show you guys and, and blah, 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 and do whatever else to them. So this is a great way for me to move in bulk. And now, as you saw in the last section, I'm getting about two megabytes a second on the real 3000. I'm gonna be very curious as to what the emulator is gonna do. Um, in fact, I guess we could just go into sysinfo under when you need, do the same thing, right? Go to drives, go to DH0, and click speed here and see what we get. Okay, we're getting 43 megs a second, which uh, could be DS or just could be, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's an extremely fast SD card. So yeah, this, that would be another reason to um, use the SCSI to SD to get files back and forth, at least large amounts of files. Uh, and then you can live in the, uh, on the Amiga full time once you've got the bulk of your, your data over. And then again, as I said, if, if when it comes time to pack up animations or rendered frames, those, those are large files. They can take up a lot of space. When you're talking, you know, anywhere from 20 megabytes to as much as, you know, 200 megabytes of data. And you're not going to, what am I going to do? Sneak in at that back and forth with floppies using quarterback? No. So having this option is really, really handy. And uh, so far, success. Uh, I'm going to load this up with all my stuff and then bring it back over to the 3000 and then we will hopefully see uh, it run and I can report back that it's uh, it's rendering and, and doing computer things that are Amiga things and not locking up or seizing up and then I'll finally put the Picasso back in it and everything will be perfect and awesome and I'll never need to make another video again. Wow! Thank you everybody! So what I am doing here is copying, uh, basically creating backups. I'm taking everything that was on the SCSI to SD, the workbench partition and the work partition, and doing a copy to my local PC so that I have uh, this 3000's blood, sweat, and tears work that I've done on it, uh, getting the workbench and work partitions set up, uh, uh, backed up, so I don't have to do it again. I can just copy it over. And yeah, I'm using uh, the Amiga shell because it's much faster than using Dopus or other types of utilities. Um, this goes really quickly. I mean, it may not look like it's going quickly, but this goes much faster than using apps. And this is just uh, gonna take a little while. This is the work partition. I think it's around 400 megabytes of data. So that's, uh, you know, that's a thing. Well, hello there again. I think this, I think this is it. We've got the Picasso installed. And yes, there are jail bars. You can get rid of those by increasing the frequency in the Picasso software, but for now I'm just gonna leave it. I got the memory installed in the 68060. So it's maxed out now, 128 on board and then 16 on the motherboard, 3000. I've got the 3000 floppy drive in there. The SCSI to SD. And yes, my LED working, the real original power LED, and the hard drive light works. Let's go ahead and open it up. Look at that, hard drive light. And of course, the obligatory light wave. Load up a scene. And let's load up my other one. I wanted to mention too in this little end bit, which is completely unrelated to this whole SCSI to SD video, that Lightwave has really bad ham conversion. So if you're going to create artwork in Lightwave, 
don't use its ham mode and save that image out, please save out the 24-bit IFF and then go into Image Effects or Art Department Professional and do it there because they do such a better job, such a better job. So just letting you know, I mean, I've got, I've got many, I have many other videos you can go see where I talk about Art Department Professional and Lightwave. So you just go through my, my little terrible channel and you can find those videos. But I just wanted to mention that because as I was messing with this, I was like, oh yeah, came across that. So let's go ahead. We're going to use Picasso 2 as our display hardware right there, Picasso 2. And uh, this is already set up, I believe. Yeah, ready, ready to go. I think did I save my changes that I did to the, I, I did not. Let's do those real quick. I'm just turning down the diffuse value and lowering the specular. And then I'm gonna actually drop the bump intensity way down, way down. And you're, you're going, what do you, what do you, I don't know what this program is. I have videos on this program. I talk about everything I just clicked on, by the way, in my other videos. So let's do that and go ahead and smash, smash F9. Is it going? Is it going? 60 and 60 power is going? It is going. Is it? Is it? <gasps> there it goes. It's doing its thing. All right. Let's do the miracle of editing. And finally, here we go. This 3000 is so quiet, by the way. That's because the SD and the Noctua fans I've, I've put in this thing. It just, it's so, so quiet. Is it, is it done? Oh, here it comes. It's, that's it. That was the thing. Oh, here comes the final thing with the stuff. Ooh, look at it go. Look at that speed. Yes. Give me your lens flare. Lens flare. I have a video on how to do those too. Check the playlist. Oh, hey, hey, ta-da. Ooh. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at that. I built this scene 30 years ago. 30 years ago on nearly the, the identical system as this, the system that you have been watching me make videos on for the last two months. Finally, finally. Thank you everybody for watching my SCSI to SD sub series. And thank you for watching my Amiga 3000 videos. I'm glad uh, you've gotten the kick out of them. I'm very happy. I think I'll make this my wallpaper. Okay, bye.